Welcome back everyone. This is Mindy here today for Lawn Fawn and in today's video we are going to be creating our own background with a single image. I'm going to be using the stamp set You're Just My Type mainly with the image of the typewriter with the paper already in it. So I thought the easiest way to do this, since I'm going to be stamping multiples of this image, was just to use an acrylic block. And I'm stamping this onto Lawn Fawn's white cardstock with the jet black ink. I am going to do a little bit of Copic coloring, and the jet black ink is great because it is Copic friendly. So I will go ahead and stamp this image numerous times. I do like to actually have more than I really need to. At this point, I didn't know how many I wanted, but it's always good to have extra. Once I have those images stamped, and I actually did go ahead and stamp this on a second sheet of paper as well, I'm just gonna quickly stamp out that cute little mouse so I don't forget him. And then I need to add a little smiley face on my typewriter. I thought this just add a little more cuteness to the card. So I'm going to ink that up as well with the jet black ink, line that up right above that top line of buttons on the typewriter, and then stamp that image. And I will do that on both sheets. Next, we're going to stamp that heart image off of the same stamp set, except I'm going to use a rainbow of colors. So I will be using chili pepper, guava, fake tan, which is the orange, sunflower, jalapeno, mermaid, and juice box. And I really loved this image because it reminded me of printouts we used to do back in grade school uh, with those really simple computer programs that they had. So I really loved this image and thought it would be cute to have this in a rainbow of colors. So once again, just using an acrylic block to stamp through this really quick and easy. Once again, doing it on both sheets of paper, and I do repeat a couple of the colors. Now, I do plan on die cutting these images out. You could certainly stamp this right onto your card front, but this was easier for me because then if I messed up stamping, I didn't have to start the card completely over. It was easier for me to just have them individually and die cut them out, and then I can arrange them the way I want in case it wasn't coming together the way I envisioned it. So that's completely up to you. Uh, it does take a little while to die cut each of these out, but I think it's well worth it in the end. And then once I finished stamping my heart images in the rainbow colors, I'm going to quickly color in this little mouse. So I am using the Copic colors E34, E31, and E30. I did go over it twice. It was just a really small image and going over it twice just kind of helped deepen those shadow areas of the mouse. And then I will do some coloring on my typewriters. So for the typewriter, I decided to go with a dark gray. So I'm using N5 and N2. I am using that darkest color, the N5, on the very outer edges. And then the middle portion, I will blend with that N2. This goes really quick. So I will show a couple of them here. And then I will go ahead off screen and finish the rest of them because I do just repeat that same step over and over on each typewriter. And this is something that would be really easy to stamp out and you could sit in front of the TV, uh, take to any sporting events for you to just color them up quickly. Now I'm going to work on coloring the inside of the typewriter where the buttons are. So I'm just quickly laying down a base color of the BG32. I'm not gonna do any shading on the inside. I'm just laying down that color. Also adding that to the uh, levers on the side. And once again, I'll repeat that on that second sheet that I have. Now, some of them you could see I didn't color in or even stamp because it either didn't stamp very well or I messed up stamping the smiley face. So that's another reason I like to stamp the extras. Now I can come in with my BG49 and I just colored in all of those little buttons. A little tedious, but it's super cute color combination. Once everything was all colored in, 
I took those images and I just trimmed them down into three inch strips. You don't want to go any wider than three inches if you're going to use a mini die cutting machine, which is what I did here. I am using the Altenew Mini Blossom die cutting machine. And this is really handy to have on your desk if you're kind of crunched on space like I am. This also made it go pretty quick since I did have a lot of images to die cut. So I had just lined up the coordinating die, held it in place with the purple tape, and ran that through that die cutting machine. Now here's a quick look at all of those little typewriters die cut out and the mouse. I also had gone ahead off screen and I die cut the outside in stitched heart stackable out of ballet slippers cardstock. And then I did go ahead and stamp a banner for my sentiment that I'll be doing. This is out of the black licorice cardstock. And I happened to use the banner off of the double slider surprise only because that was the first die I saw in my stash that had a banner and it worked. So use whatever you have on hand that works for your sentiment. I lined the banner up in my Misty tool, prepped that with an anti-static powder tool so that my embossing powder only sticks where I want it. And then I'm going to stamp this wavy saying, this is off of the Love Poems stamp set. I will go ahead and ink that up with the embossing ink. And I'm holding that banner down with my magnet tool there. And I do personally like to stamp mine twice to make sure that I had really good coverage. Then I will sprinkle on the white embossing powder. I like to keep mine in a little container here. I actually get this out of the school supply section in the stores. And then I'll heat set that with my heat tool. Now I'm going to play a little bit with the arrangement of my card. So one thing with making a background like this, when you have a bunch of images, either the same or different, you want to have some hanging off the edge of your card. That's just going to be more appealing to the eye when you have a lot of images like this and you want to create that entire background. And you can see I'm kind of staggering how they're being lined up on the card. I'm also trying to keep them in rainbow order. So once I have those all lined up, making sure I have some hanging off and I didn't want them all perfectly lined up. Like I said, I wanted them staggered. I went ahead and just added the tape runner to the back and glued all of those down. Now I'll take this to my paper trimmer and I'm going to trim off all of that excess. So this card is going to measure four and a quarter by five and a half. And you could certainly take a pair of scissors and trim off that excess. I'm just, I trust the paper trimmer more than I trust myself. So <laughs> that's how I work it. And now for that pink heart, I'm going to put some foam squares on the back of that. Remove the backing and attach that to the front of my card. So that has a little bit of dimension to it. I'm also going to add a couple of these small foam squares to the back of my mouse and pop that up just a little bit. And it worked out to have the mouse just down there in the bottom corner. And then I can take my sentiment banner and just attach it right on top of the heart. I didn't need to add any additional foam squares to it. I had an extra typewriter left over from my images, so I thought I would decorate the inside of the card, which I don't normally show. So here I just took a piece of white cardstock measuring four and a quarter by 11, used my scoreboard to score that at five and a half, and then used my bone folder to crease that. Then I'll just add this with a tape runner and attach my card front to this base to complete the card. And now for the inside, I did stamp a sentiment at first, but since I had this extra one, I'm actually going to stamp the sentiment right on top of that heart. And then I will just attach that to the inside of my card, which worked out really great. That will finish up my card for today. I hope you enjoyed it and will give this a try creating your own background with a single image. Thanks so much for joining and I'll see you next time.